Okay, here's an update. Nothing surprising, really. The reason my prom board was not loading the disc, it does have a, di a bootloader in there. It does have one. It is at FC00, I believe. Uh, well, anyway, it's got a bad uh, one of the in the socket. It's got a bad uh, holder, bad pin holder in there. I found that. Before that, I was scanning through the 64K of memory just to see if it had all zeros in there if I put them in there. And I noticed some errors. And they were consistent errors in different addresses. They were like in the same spot. So I narrowed it down to this board. I said it was board number two. It was in the uh, 16 to 32K. So I took number three board is 32 to 48 made it number two it said machine said okay we can do that put this one in is number three wouldn't start up set the switches around this one here I put it back in uh, to take up the uh, I haven't figured those switches out yet. I don't know what how they got them things set. But I put it back in there. There should have been a gap between the uh, 32 and 48. Put it back in there. Wouldn't start. I set these switches. Won't start. Put it back as number two. Won't start. What I did, I moved the. Uh, where is it? What board I got in there? Oh heck! This is number uh, three board. Won't start. I'm running with a good first board and the bad number two with the memory errors. I moved the chips from one spot. They were in the second row. I know they were. I moved them to the outer row. Went back through the memory. Everything's fine. So it could have just been a bad socket, uh, dust, dirt, who knows, Corro uh, corrosion, whatever. But I cannot get board number three to run. I cannot get board number four to run. The disc will not load now. So it tries, it loads. So either it's trying to load it into memory somewhere, I don't know, it's not there no more. So that's an update. Every time I turn this thing on or make a move with it, something's broke, something doesn't work, something breaks. I don't like turning these things on. I think if I get these things running, they're going back on the shelf, and then they're going to sit. And I'll know what to expect. I'll put a big sign up there. If you turn me on, something is going to break. So, that's an update. Yeah, let me say it is now 812 of 2013. Yeah, it's almost midnight. Another update. 813, 124 of course, 2013, 16K board, 16K, 16K, 8K, that is not an, a, a 16K DRAM board, it's an 8K static board, I thought it was a 16K DRAM, but it's an 8K static and it bumps right up against the 8K EEPROM board. I've got 
Number two, memory board working. Number four, it bumps up to the E0 address. The last 8K, it runs. The first, okay, I got 16, 16, a blank of 16. That's that one there. And then I've got the last eight. I think it's one of these drivers here. I don't know what happened. It just out of nowhere. Oh, that's the bad chip. This one here was in board number two. As I was going through the memory, I noticed uh, they were not consistent. And it only happened at a certain addresses. And that's the one that came out of this board. It was this one on the other board. So, just by replacing one at a time in this row, it came down to this one. It still works, but it's, it's got a problem. It's not stopping this board from working. It, this board has got a driver problem. I don't know what happened. They were working until I pulled the thing out and put it back in, and then it stopped working. So, that's what happens to these things. I do have a bootloader. Uh, did I mention the uh, prom board? Had a, yeah, I did. It's got a bad socket on the uh, FC00 prom. It's working now. I bent the thing out. It's just one pin or one in the socket. Just one pin in the socket. It is damaged. But I've got it touching it. It does work. Disk drive, if I put in... Oh, it also has a small uh, prom monitor in there. If I go to that prom monitor, put in the hex address, uh, 377000, the disk drive comes on and it loads. So, I've got this board straightened out. It's down to this one now. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know what happened. If I run just the two boards, yeah, if I run two boards, thing boots up fine and everything. If I put in the third board, it has a little bit of hesitation. It doesn't really want to start, but I mean, it will fairly easy. Put this one in, no. Just will not do nothing. Locks everything up. So, that's the update. Making progress. What a week, what a week. The processor board decided to start acting up. And during that time, the upper 48 to 56K, uh, here it is, uh, 48 to 56K memory board, it disappeared from the radar. So, in the process of trying to find out what is happening to the upper memory, I removed them, the other three, and I put in, out of number three's machine, I put in the uh, upper 0 to 32K board. Turned the switch on, and it blew a capacitor and caught on fire. The capacitor did. So... I had to take the other memory board, which is full of errors. I put it in there and had to use it. And that really wasn't telling me anything because it was full of errors and it had problems. During that time, I was trying to start up a doggone machine with a bad processor board so I had to take number three's processor board put it in there started right up ran fine every time so that's how I realized this one has had problems so I'm trying to get this disk ready and putting it in here because number one isn't going to run a disk anyway so it don't care so I've got a fully clean 
uh, 56k sitting here this upper memory board I don't know what was the matter with it I pulled all the driver chips out of it cleaned them because they hit some kind of black some of them had some black coating or something on them cleaned them put them in tried it didn't work looked the board over carefully didn't see nothing wrong took the driver chips back out looked at them put them back in now it works I don't know I think it's that black stuff sitting on them so in the process of doing going through all of that I had to take number three's prom board I had to take the prom, a 1702 out of number one, put it in this board because it's a 1702. I had to put it in the uh, upper memory slot. This is the upper memory slot, not down here where they had theirs. But anyway. Put it in the upper slot. Got it running. I was able to at least check the memory with a minimum set of boards so I got that straightened out got my old board back in there that's working everything up to now is working fine I don't have the disk drive boards in there I'm sure they work I'm trying to find the problem on the processor board if I can what is the deal with it uh, what else uh, the other information ah what I have found that works on these boards, on the slides, and on the, uh, from sliding into the uh, sockets here, automotive silicone grease. It's, uh, if this isn't heat sink compound, it's, uh, the heat sink compound is too, too conductive. This is, uh, this is for used on spark plug boots, uh, automotive, electrical sockets, uh, connectors, computer connectors. It's slightly, it's conductive enough where it's not going to uh, short anything or cause any signals to go crossing. Because they use this on computer connectors too. And it's a lot better than putting in dry boards and dry connectors. It works very well. I like it. So that's where I'm at. Uh, back in the disk running condition where I'll be able to confidently load a disk and maybe hopefully make copies, reliable copies, without memory errors because this CPM apparently does not know the difference between what is in memory, whether it's an error or not. It'll write it to disk or keep it in memory. It doesn't do have a checksum or anything. These programs are crude, and but they work when they work. So I've got a clean memory boards. I'll have a good processor board, whichever one goes in there. And hopefully I can get this thing to... Make some copies off of these discs. Boy, some of those discs are just got a lot of wear on them, and they're just not, not, not going to be useful anymore. And I think that's why I, I ended up picking them up for a cheap price, as someone was throwing them away, and I ended up buying them. So that's where we're at. I've been doing a little calculating on that. Not calculating, but doing some memory checking. So that's where we're at, and it is 817. Again, it's 2236 at night. There's a lava lamp. Now, let's turn around. So, anyway, this is where the high bite goes. This is where the lowest one goes. 
This is FF. Mine ran at uh, FC. So there's the address switches. Cut those. Have to reset the. Okay, address switches. This is for the serial port. This is the uh, prom address. And this is the uh, memory address for up here. That's your serial, or I guess terminal, or whatever you want to use it for. I believe I've used that for terminals before. And this is your auto start. These are the sense switches for the disk drive. That's about where they go. That is where they go. That I've seen on my two machines. So that answers that mystery also. And it is, I'm about out of battery on this thing. It's 8.17 and it's now almost midnight. Same day. So, we'll throw the disk drive back in there. Disk drive boards. Throw the disk up there. And give it a run.